Our VIP guest this morning or this evening, whatever you watch this, <laughs> Moara <laughs> Passoni. Hi, Mora. <laughs> Hello. Thank, Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Um, let me ask you, first of all, uh, how are you doing at the moment? How's your fall going so far? Uh, yeah, I'm confined. I came to Brazil. Like, I live in New York City. I came to Brazil uh, to help my parents. And I'm here, like, I don't know, trying to connect with the world as much as I can. But, like, this virtual thing is... Kind of driving me crazy <laughs> <laughs> so i try like keep creating things and and i mean and doing some actions uh political actions to not go crazy but anyway <laughs> and you surround yourself with beautiful books as it seems like <laughs> amazing library <laughs> i love it <laughs> so. i have a whole room for me there's a guy yeah. It is There's the uh, this guy which is really really still so it's like, I'm really not <laughs> yeah, amazing. You're very helpful. <laughs> so, Moana, if uh, if you're ready, we can get right to it. Talk about your incredible film, Extas. How, how do you pronounce it? First of all, in uh, in Portuguese, Estasi. Oh, okay. So in French, Extas, Ecstasy. Okay. All right. When your film starts, there's no mystery because it says anorexia is extas. This is the first thing we hear in your film. So the subject is announced directly. And in it's, it is a tough subject, obviously. Like, first of all, this is what comes to mind. It's a subject that we, we heard, we read about it in the, you know, in literature and films as well, uh, have dealt with it. But you make something quite different with it. Why did you, first of all, decide to explore this tough subject in your film? Uh, yeah, the film ca came from my own experience with anorexia. I had anorexia from 18 until, eight, like, sorry, from 11 to 18 years old. Uh, and of course, like, it was not like that I just finished anorexia when I was, I, I, I didn't get out of anorexia when I was 18. It became a question and took me a lot of time even to get out of that condition. Uh, and I had a feeling that I could barely communicate what I was living during those years. Uh, I couldn't really find like echoes of my experience on films that I had access to watch. Uh, and somehow I needed to communicate that. Uh, and that was like when I finally, even on my experience, that was when I finally found ears like able to hear what was going on with me uh beyond i don't know the stigmas that are around this like word anorexia and also like all the spectacle that normally it's is made around the subject that i decided to make the film uh and then i mean i had not decided because i really decided When I finally, uh, two things were important. Uh, I met a friend of mine who was finishing a PhD on Marguerite Duras uh, in France. And yes. he, and like, and Mauricio, he, com he comes from music and, and now like he worked with literature and theater. And like Mauricio and I, we started like reading uh, Marguerite's uh, books and, uh, f and watching her films. Um, And somehow what she writes echoed a lot what I had living during those, experience, those years. Oh, wow. And I started feeling, oh, okay, there is something there that uh, is like worth it to explore because it goes beyond my own only individual experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is something there that's being said about our world, about being woman, about dealing with your own body, dealing with this, like your own body in the world, like this condition, like that we have almost like even existential. Uh, and so all those questions and also uh, her idea of like this in, the invention of a voice. And for me, like there is not, it's, it's a film about anorexia, but it's also a film about a girl trying to find a voice for herself. 
and trying to find a body and trying to find a shape she could fit or not fit. And uh, so then I started getting, okay, maybe it's, it's interesting to talk about this question. And then I started uh, interviewing and working with uh, women that were suffering anorexia. Because uh, the years I lived, the internet wasn't so strong and I didn't find anyone. And also like when I, when after like I found things about anorexia, it's kind of like different from what I lived, mm -hmm. the way uh, the blogs and etc. were talking about the experience. But anyway, and I, I started like uh, researching with those women. They gave me their journals, the intimate journals, uh, and I started reading also a lot of books about anorexia and from people who had lived anorexia. And, and I also understood, okay, there is something in this thing that's really big, that's really about our condition in this world. So then I decided to make the film, I think, when I understood the subject like transcended me uh, and was not only about my, not that my experience is not important, it's not about that, but like, it's also how I could humanize my own experience somehow and understand I was not only a crazy girl <laughs> trying to starve myself to death, but there was something there that I was trying to build indeed, like some, something there that I was trying to cure. Uh, I was trying to heal myself from something and I started understanding that like, I don't know, years later when I had already like overcome Norex, I was about like 28 when I started the project. So, yeah. It's fascinating. And it's what you're saying is actually quite honest. And, and I think it's, it's a great way to share your own personal experience, but make it actually bigger and larger to encompass other experiences as well. And you said something actually, which I find quite uh, interesting as well, is that, uh, you know, when you were right in it, living this anorexia, and even in the years after, you were not ready to talk about it or experience it, and you needed a way to talk about it. And sometimes, you know, it, it's when you experience trauma, for instance, sometimes you are not ready to talk about it there and it can come out in a few years afterwards and, and for you you said you had a different elements either uh, with Marguerite Duras for instance or other uh, persons you met and at some point your film was there at the right time to mm -hmm. express your own experience so I find this uh, actually quite fascinating and the personal approach in your film it, it's a really personal film. That's what I felt. Yet, almost experimental also at the same time. I really like how the way both uh, things were there. Um, we understand that Clara is your alter ego somehow. So it becomes this autobiographical fiction somehow, if we can call it like that. Can you tell us, <laughs> can, can you tell us a bit more about um, the use, for instance, of the archive images in your film uh, and the voiceover of the child also which I found quite interesting how does this come together uh, for you yeah um, I think like the film this idea of like working with uh, archive material uh, comes from this idea of building the film in, like this line that divides fiction and documentary in terms of like I think for me, the film, uh, it pulses between reality and delirium. Mm -hmm. And this archive material brings this reality while this like delirium is like made in all, all those images that for me are not reconstructions, are really something different from that. Although all the scenes came from real experiences, either mm -hmm. mine or the other women, because like in the film, I also connect with those other women. Uh, so most of the uh, most of the film uh, comes from my own story, like uh, and it, like the structure of the film follows my own story, and places of the film as Brasilia, as Jardim Angela in São Paulo, uh, they are places where I lived uh, my own story. But at the same time, like there are scenes that came from this dialogue with those other women, um, and then. Like that was also like, it was only when I allowed myself to go back to my own experience that I was able to make the film. Because at the beginning I was really like going, no, I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about this experience called anorexia and this subject that can be kind of like, 
in terms of like thinking, it's a quite fascinating object, uh, subject. And, and I was making a film that was much more about anorexia, an essay film about anorexia, than experience, like an experience from a person. And I think when I allowed going back to my own experience was when like the film started gaining some li like really gaining life and vitality. And then I decided, okay, I will bring this like archival footage from my own story and my parents' story to the film. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and for me, really like it's an autobiographical fiction, that's for sure. Like, although like when we write autobiographies, I think write or make autobiographies in films, I think we are always like uh, working with in the domain, domain of fiction and memory, like, and the film is really based also on memories, besides my writing, my own writing during anorexia. Uh, so I had those th things that are documents, uh -huh. but they are also like documents from a moment when I was like, I was in an out reality. My connection with the world was in another place. It was, I mean, yeah, so the whole film works in this frontier. Just one thing about the word anorexia that I decided to put in the beginning of the film, because exactly like I think for me, it's like a word with several layers. Mm -hmm. And in the film, we talk about all those layers. So the idea of anorexia, it's almost like in the end of the film is something quite different from normally what people know about, like what people know about this what about the, what is anorexia? So the, like almost like a black a Pandora box where you start taking things from inside and you, yeah. And it's, it's what you said actually about your own personal experience being, finally you decided to include it in the film instead of being, you know, keeping an arm's length distance with your subject, which, you know, we've seen on TV and stuff like films like, about this subject but really in a cold way but you you decided to include your own personal experience to it and it's when you make yourself vulnerable actually that you get to touch even more i think the people okay. and that's what i think you did with your film that's why it stayed mm -hmm. with me actually and this artistic essay that you did we understand a lot the pressure on the body in order to be perfect, you know, for a young dancer, for instance, that we see there's a scene when you see this teenage girl running, you know, extensively, and then she falls and she dies actually in front of her younger self. We get to understand, is that a vision you once had? How did the scene come to life? That's a good question. Hmm. Uh, I feel I had to kill myself several times in order even like to overcome anorexia. And there was this feeling about the body falling that was something that always was always present to me. And this idea of like, it's weird because death is something that you know you are at the risk of, like, you know, you can die, but this is not the, this does not signify anything for you uh, because what you're gaining when you're in this condition is bigger than the possibility of dying. Uh, and you really like establish something that is on the limit again, like this idea of like this line that divide life and death and all that. And like I, in the film also, we separate uh, what is organic and what is not organic and life al almost never melts with uh, non-life. Uh, so this is almost like a principle of the film. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, and I think maybe, maybe there is something there about... Uh, <laughs> about Dracula, about <laughs> about having to like death as something that like delineates something um. that puts limits on something that is limitless. Like, it, it, and this is one of the the big feelings when you're in anorexia. In anorexia, you you lose all your shapes, all re, all all limits you have uh, around you. So. I think it came there, although, of course, like, I think in the creation of a film, nothing is totally consciousness. So yeah. I also allowed myself to bring everything that was like inside me. I think like 
part, partially maybe I made the film even to discover what was this experience that I had, like what was this? What did I live in all those years? Because also as Margit has this in, in, she writes in Hiroshima Mon Amour, mm -hmm. there is something about uh, this woman when she's in this condition of like uh, in her uh, craziness that she says like, I can't, like, she cannot, I, I don't remember what she says exactly, but this idea that what she lived in the past is inside her, but it's almost as she could not access that, but it keeps producing things on you. So it's more or less what I, what I, what I, the feeling I have regarding those years. Mm. Um, you could express it, like, as you said, with, with your, your art, with your directing, that was a way to, understand what was inside of you actually and express it in the most personal yet experimental way as we said at the same time and it really comes together mm -hmm. and there was a point also when you talk about you know Clara gets hospitalized uh, she criticizes it by saying the methods don't seem to cure anorexia but rather punish her for having this disease um, do you still think it's the case? I know it's maybe a more question about the subject, but how, what is your position uh, towards this? <laughs> well, I mean, this subject for me is like a very good subject to think, as I told you, and I wrote a lot about anorexia uh, yeah. even to understand what is that about. Like, I don't know, uh, as, like, as much as I made the film, I wrote like essays about anorexia in my more like artistic sense. Of course, I wasn't trying to go on the magical side, uh, but yes, like uh, the problem is when I live with my experience and I know that some, like, of course, the med scene already changed a lot from when I live it to nowadays. But at the same time, like people normally think that you choose to be in this condition. Mm -hmm. And then like the anorexics, normally they are very good on manipulating people. And the doctors, of course, they feel that and the family knows that and uh, I think there is a prejudice that participates in the contact between doctor and, and patient. And um, so it's part from that, but also this idea of like, uh, that what I heard several times, if you don't eat, you're going to die. And I, I, and I said, so what? And, like, and I know the, this is the thing, like, uh, I'm not here because I just choose to be anorexic. It's not about that. Like, so in this sense, yes, there is a kind of like punitive mentality around like mental illness uh, diseases, I think, like on mental illness conditions or eating disorders. I don't know how you want to classify that depending where you are. You call anorexia like mental illness or eating disorders. So yeah. things like a disorder or a mental illness, it, it, it differs in some countries uh, from country to country. But anyway, uh, yeah, and I, I felt like, I don't know, just uh, this guy could not hear what I was living. And I mean, to go there, like there was a psychiatrist uh, from hung Hungary in Brazil. She was working in Brazil, um, a Hungarian psychiatrist, psychiatrist. And she, she understood there was no point on talking about eating or not eating with me, about like even talking about anorexia uh, or talking about like my weight or my like, or I don't know, my nutrition and all that. Uh, she started reading books with me because that was the only thing I would do besides like I stopped dancing and I started running because they prohibited me like, and then they also prohibited me to, to like to exercise and everything. But anyway, um, what happened is that I, no, that, that's weird. When I talk about this subject, sometimes I have like this uh, invisible places where I go, this labyrinthic places. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, so I, we started reading books together and one of the books, one of the first books was indeed Alice in the Wonderlands. Oh yeah. And, and just crazy because she entered my logic and she broke the logic of control like my logic of trying to control everything. Mm -hmm. And she somehow made the desire, like win the control, like the, the willingness for desire started being stronger than my desire for control. 
And, and that was a moment when I felt, uh, I mean, I didn't know uh, any of that. I, everything, of, of course, I, I started understanding afterwards, but yeah. Wow. I don't know if I answered your question, but anyway. You did, you did actually, and uh, thank you for, for sharing that. Thank you very there's, much. <laughs> there's one thing only that I would love to say that you, you, like, you spoke about being at risk. Mm -hmm. And I think, of course, like as an artist, but also as someone who had some experience dancing and I was did like, I loved ballet, classical ballet. And then I went back to study contemporary dance, even though I went to like cinema, I spoke <laughs> more to me and I could, I don't know, I just chose cinema. I love dancing until nowadays. But anyway, I think when you have like this performing arts, mm -hmm. like the feeling of being at risk and being vulnerable, is even stronger because like as a film takes a lot of time and you have so many different moments sometimes it's it's easy to lose this like this feeling and for me it's also what makes me alive and make me discover things through the process what is quite important yeah and in this really personal theme as we said as well there there are moments and i really was curious to hear you actually about the um, meaning of you know the blue dot this <laughs> infamous blue dot which is quite hypnotic i was hypnotized by this and i think for, i was actually really curious to hear you about the meaning of this in your film for the character but what do you think we can get out of it as a viewer as well yeah uh, okay uh, the blue dot came from like this as a child, I would do several like magical games. I had several, like I had a lot of like magical thoughts and I would do like mental games to, as my, I didn't have contact with my mom because my mom was always outside working and we lived in them. Like the militias were already like arriving to the outskirts of Sao Paulo and et cetera. And like my family was even threatened, like my mom's was threatened several times. Anyway, like it's a mix between like being a child, child never see the mother and also have having a real risk around me, mm -hmm. uh, something that would put life in, uh, at risk. Uh, and I started developing like this magical thoughts even to guarantee my, that my mom was alive as I couldn't talk to her. I would do, I don't know. I would count into three before like a bird would pass and like cross the horizon or a bird should cross the horizon while I count into hundred. I don't know. Things like that that were completely imaginary and would give me some kind of some feeling of safety. And then this idea of like you playing games with yourself and being stronger than yourself is a strategy that I had during anorexia a lot. And the blue dot is more like is somehow that thing because it's at the same time, it's the control, it's the control of the desire. That's why it grows and it shrinks and some, at some point it explodes. Yes, it does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and I think that was like, of course, like a graphical way of translating all these mental strategies uh, that you have with yourself and this war between mind and body where you are in this condition. Yeah. And that, that is really good visual representation. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> <we're fine. laughs> uh, I wanted actually to hear you. You talked a little bit about places where you lived and there is a special place it seems in your film uh, because there are a lot of shots with uh, monuments and buildings, like the ones we see in Brasilia, for instance. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me the importance of architecture, which is, you know, the first art in your film? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the first feeling I had towards Brasilia as a city uh, and architecture was that it kind of like mimics the feeling you have when you are in the anorexia world. Of course, like the way I see Brazil and the way I film with Brazil is connected to that feeling. Um, and this idea of like reducing your body into lines and to this uh, essential, this idea of its essence is super strong in anorexia. I, I don't even know if I believe on that anymore, but anyway, <laughs> when I was in this condition, uh, I was searching for this essence of this structure mm -hmm. and my obsession, for example, of like 
I don't know, the pleasure of even seeing my bones through like growing under my skin and being become growing under my skin, yeah, being more visible and more visible was the pleasure of like the comfort of having a structure, uh, of having a very clear structure that's the opposite of the meat in your body, yeah. like and everything, all the organs and everything that you do not know that exists and kind of like shapeless mm -hmm. and, and the lines of the architecture and the architecture of the body allows you to have this safety. That was something that I was uh, searching for. Um, yeah. And somehow she's trying to do with her body what, I don't know, architecture does with this space that's creating those lines and limits and uh, and also this idea of monumentality mm -hmm. and this idea of scale that was very important. Um, it's also about how do you feel when you are, like how do you feel regarding like the community, regarding society and how small do you feel or anyway, yeah. And this idea of like Brasilia was uh, in the sense like Brasilia and also when I decided to show the Norex body, that was also like something that I, I, I really struggled a lot to decide to do that. But uh, it's this idea of like reducing the landscape into lines, like into what is the most essential, what, what is really defines the shapes and, and guarantees some clarity. I, I hope it makes sense. It does actually. I, and I brings a whole new lighting on this film actually with when you talk about the relationship which i haven't seen on the first viewing but now you see it like the parallels are really clear so yeah thank you for sharing that <laughs> yeah, also one thing like uh, you as you don't have this feeling of limit like as you don't know what the limits of your body are that's why you go to the reduction uh, also because at some point your body is almost the space where you are into and I think even because that was confining myself into a room was mm -hmm. quite similar to what is happening nowadays <laughs> uh, but it's as if your body was like the size of the room where you are in and I mean these feelings are kind of like it's weird because anorexia is something very virtual mm -hmm. <laughs> but at the same time extremely concrete because you're like transforming that into things against your own body and those things are like, yeah, so. Well, thank you so much for sharing and spending, like we could have spent, I feel like so much more time. And it's, it's, it would have been actually really nice to be able to have, you know, questions from the audience because I'm sure like this is a subject where clearly you meet people and instantly they, they feel like they could share, they could open up with you because you are really honest in your film and your experience. So I really wanted once again to thank you uh, for sharing that with us and spending time uh, to talk about this wonderful film. Uh, so Mara, thank you very much for being here. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for having the film in the festival and hope you enjoyed like as audience, you, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, <laughs> but the film is like, I hope it, it's an, an experience that makes you think and feel things differently. Absolutely.